Hey everybody, I'm Dave Carger here at the IMDb studio in Toronto, here with the director and cast of Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi, and Roman Griffin Davis, Sam Rockwell, Thomas and McKenzie, Stephen Merchant, hello to you all. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. I have something very coveted in my hand, which is a ticket to your premiere tomorrow night. I'm so, I'm, no, no, I need it, I need it. This is one I've been very, very excited about seeing. I don't even have one of those. Really? I'll no. rip it in half, Thomason, and share it with you. you we will sit together. You didn't know that we were even showing it. <laughs> Taika, take me back to... You I'll get... take you back. I'll take you all the way back. Where do you want to go? <laughs> okay, I want to go back to... Your mom recommends a book to you. You want to take me back to my mother's story? Yeah, why not? A little bit. What? She says you should read this book, Caging Skies, by Christine Lunens. It's basically about a young boy in 1940s Vienna. He's part of the Hitler Youth. He daydreams you know about story? Hitler, and he discovers that his family is hiding a Jewish girl in, in their attic. Yeah. You, what makes you read it, which I love, and think, this needs to be a movie and Hitler needs to be a character in it? Uh, well, the, the story that shows how she described the book, um, and the book is, 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 a, very good, um, is a very good read, uh, but I'm not a like, dramatic storyteller. So I've read the book and it's like, oh, this, this brilliant premise, Brilliant situation, but if I was to do the film, then I'd just make put, thing, put elements in there that would that would sort of make me uh, m more interested in coming to work, and um, and so I yeah I just put more of myself in there, literally, and then, <laughs> um, and yeah and and that, uh, but I always do that. If you watch any of my stuff, I will crowbar myself into that those films. <laughs> you you can't stop me. Did Christine need any convincing, or was she on board with all of your ideas? No, I tricked her big time into <laughs> giving me those rights and uh, didn't tell her at all that I was going to do that. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe that. Um, Sam, what can you do when you're in Taika's world as an actor that maybe you can't do when you're in another director's world? <clears throat> Uh, you know, the, the script is just so brilliant, that, um, and Taika has a really good comedy compass, you know, so it's... It's uh, I don't know. It's like it's just you get you you get to, you get to say this amazing text, but you also get to play around, and he encourages you to play around, and so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Roman, this is your first ever professional acting job. Was it scary the first couple of days that you were on the set, or did you feel like I've got this? It was terrifying, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Taika was really supportive. Thank you. And uh, so were all the other actors. So th that helped me a lot. And it was also interesting. It was really interesting, so I didn't really think about being the first kind of. Did you ask Thomason for any advice since she was one of the people closer to your age? Uh, I kind of just, <laughs> I kind of just watched her when she was doing the thing. I didn't really ask for advice. I was too shy. But um, I was from the get go. I was beyond impressed with Roman with his. Just, I don't know, he was so emotionally deep. He had such lightness and humor and you know, just from the get-go, beautiful. Thanks. And Thomason, am I right that Taika wanted you to watch the movie Heathers to prepare for yes. your character? I yeah, love that I, choice. I went into it, what, you know, reading a whole lot of books and doing a, putting a lot of research into it and trying to be as sensitive as possible to the, to the topic. Um, and I got to dinner the very first time I, I met Taika. I sat down, I told him how I'd prepared, and he said, scrap that, watch here, there's Mean Girls. <laughs> and Mean Girls. Oh, that's so good. Thomason, you know how much I love you. We did a lot of stuff together for Leave No Trace, and I was just blown away by your performance in that movie and your U.S. accent in that film. What's harder, the accent you did for that film or the German accent or the, or the Austrian accent you do for this one? I think definitely this one, because um, I had been doing the American accent for a, for a while, and then this this one we kind of had to learn it quite quick, and so I find I found that a real challenge. Yeah. But it was fun. It's a really cool accent. So, Stephen, for you as someone who is not only someone who acts all the time but also directs a lot, is it a relief to relinquish a lot of control? Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. No, I was thinking actually as I was coming to do this that I have no responsibility. 
Yeah. So, you know what I mean? If this film succeeds or fails, it's not on my shoulders. It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, it's all on that guy. Uh, and um, <laughs> so that's similarly as an actor, you come in and it's like he gets blamed if I do a terrible performance <laughs> and I get all the praise if I do a good one. It's right. just fantastic. Did you, did you ever have an urge just to kind of walk up to and... To play a Nazi? No, Always. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I've been waiting for that phone call all my career and it's come. I, 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 <laughs> did you ever want to whisper something in his ear like, Maybe just move the camera over just Never. a tiny bit. No, honestly, I, it, as, as uh, Sam was saying, I, it was just a pleasure to be on set with, with him. And he was, he was, you know, he knew exactly what he wanted, but he gave us freedom to play around. My biggest anxiety was that I'm not particularly adept at accents. And so, you know, as Thomason said, it's quite hard, I think, that, to, to do a German accent that isn't just cartoony. Right. And, um, and I'd worked quite carefully with this, this vocal coach to sort of, and I'd sort of broken all the words down phonetically in the script and to kind of mastered that. Sleeping in our beds. Eating our foods, I've got all this, and then, and then he says, oh, and now just have fun, improvise. Improvise, <laughs> in a German accent. Um, but somehow we, through careful ADR, have managed to pull it off. Was the accent as scary and daunting for you, Sam? Oh, very scary, I, but I had Oh, a, use I, the mic, though. I had a, oh, yeah, I had very scary, but I had a dialect coach, Liz Himmelstein, who's coming to the premiere tomorrow, and then we had also had a dialect coach, another one on set, um, but uh, yeah, and we, I watched, you know, all the famous Nazis, uh, you know, Ray Fiennes. Himmler. Yes, yes. <laughs> Goebbels. <laughs> all, all the famous. Uh, watched Hogan's uh, Heroes. Watched, uh, every episode. I watched the Hogan's Heroes. Hogan's Heroes. Uh, no, I watched Brando and the, the Young Lions. I watched Oscar Werner and Ship of Fools and, um, you know, just, just worked on it phonetically. But I kind of saw him as more like... Bill Murray mm. with a German accent, or Walter Matthau on Bad News Bears. It was, that was kind of my model for him. That's very different from Marlon Brando and the Young Lions, yes. where it's serious. But, yes, no, totally. Right. But I, but the German accent was was definitely intimidating. But once I got into it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Taika, reaction when you first saw yourself in the full Hitler makeup and costume. Uh, my reaction was like, oh my god, once in a generation an actor comes along and just <laughs> changes the game and the entire landscape and everything that we thought we knew about acting and I looked in the mirror and I was like, that, this is that moment that this, that, that, that actor has arrived <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, I've been waiting for all my life all my life I've been waiting to see someone who was daring enough and uh, who had just the range Right. The range, and my range is from, this is my range as an actor. Uh, hi guys, I'm Hitler, too. Hi guys, I'm Hitler! <laughs> so that's it, and that's really it. And, but no one else can do that. But <laughs> <laughs> so were there moments where he's in the full costume, but as himself trying to direct you? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and I think Taika has some good stories about that. But, yeah. And we've had those contact lenses, you and I. We had to watch. Oh, yeah, no, contact uh, lenses. Cool, yeah. uh, here's a word of advice. Don't. Uh, don't do contact don't, lenses. Don't. Yeah. Don't go blind. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't have, like, messed up eyes and stuff and uh, that you need contacts. So uncomfortable. But uh, I did have one saw a, a very embarrassing moment uh, on this Riverside scene with you. Uh, Roman, is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's Roman, yeah. <laughs> Roman and Scarlett. And um, I was trying to communicate with the camera crew and who was on the other side of this river. I was dressed up as that idiot. And, um, and I started getting really frustrated. Anyway, I started like, tr yelling across this river and at, at the crew. And I'm like, why can't you guys just get it right? Why can't you follow these simple orders? And like yelling at them, <laughs> dressed like <laughs> this, that, with the moustache and everything in the open air in Prague. And, there were, and the EPK crew was there. Oh no. Pe filming everything. And I went home, it was one of the most depressing moments for me, shooting anything. Oh. It was, well, I don't know. I guess that moustache has got you know, a certain thing where it just makes you angry. Because right. you look in the mirror and you're like, oh, that thing looks so dumb. It makes <laughs> me really angry. So, Roman, do you remember that day? Yeah. How'd you, get, how'd you get through it? I told you never to talk about that. <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't shout at me, funnily enough. Right. Uh, That's good, good answer. <laughs> now, <laughs> continue with the other things I yeah. told you to say. <laughs> Scarlett was there as well. He, I mean, Scarlett helped a lot with it, but 
you to me you're always nice in the costume so oh. so it was a bit odd because i was looking at you going How's... and you'd be really nice and be like <laughs> we all, we all no, that's right. No, it's not. It's right. sure it's very, um, it's very uncomfortable and mm. very um, mm. confusing yeah. right. to be treated nice anything, by someone yeah. who looks like uh -huh. that. Right. What's Tyke, that? Taika looks good in anything. There you go. Yeah. But okay, but I, and I'm sure you talked about this before. But originally, the idea was not for you to play the part. Who did you have in mind when you were writing it? Um, this other guy, um, uh, D Dying. Uh, my Ninti, um, <laughs> uh, one of my favourite actors, okay. looks very much like me. <laughs> uh, we'd, it's very, well, I'd, we'd gone out, it was like 2011, we'd gone out to other, like a few people and it was just a very, it was, I don't know why, why, but it was just very hard to kind of get this film up and running and, uh, and then I went I off and I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> You're what right. You know, you're it? right. Um, <laughs> I was asking myself, I wonder why. Uh, and then eventually I went off and made two other films, and, and then I guess, it, I don't know what, what, I don't know what changed in the uh, landscape out there, but it, it Maybe became four. easier. Right, I get it. Yeah.